Yo, 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 what's cracking, Panther Nation? It's your boy Rashad, one half of PNP, and today we're here to break down a 3 4 defense, okay? Frank Reich just came out and announced that we are officially transitioning into a 3 4 defense. Let's see him talk about it here. Defensively, are you committed to a 3 4 then scheme? Yeah, Ajero's been 3 4. It'll be a base 3 4 scheme, but when we get in sub, it's really multiple. You know, it's really multiple. There's four down, three down, five down. Um, it'll all depend on how Jero and the defensive staff want to put our player, you know, take advantage of our players' strengths. Uh, we'll be very multiple, but in our base defense, we'll be 3-4. Now, what does that mean? We have to quickly assess, do we have the dogs to run this 3-4 base defense? And it really starts up front, the front seven. We're not going to talk about the secondary in this particular video. We're going to talk about the front seven and assess whether we have the guys to, to play this defense and where they fit in this defense, okay? Now before we get into the meet that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, get in the comments, let me know what's good, okay? We're trying to get to 20,000 subscribers, so do me a favor, hit that subscribe button for your boy and help us get to 20,000 subscribers before the draft, okay? That's the goal, 20K, it's gotta happen, let's make it happen, okay? All right, let's go ahead and get into this. Now, before we get to anything, we have to understand the basics of a 3-4 defense. The roles and responsibilities are gonna be a little bit different, uh, and we have to understand, do we have the guys to run this defense effectively? It's not just whether you have the guys, because of course, we can make guys do anything uh, on the defensive line, but are they gonna be effective when they get there? So let's just quickly go over the roles and responsibilities of uh, the down linemen uh, and, the, and the linebackers. We're gonna, again, sp specifically focus on the front seven in this, we're not gonna talk about the coverages because it gets a really complicated when we get into that. So we're gonna hold off on that uh, until a little bit later. But the defensive ends, you're gonna have two different defensive ends. Those guys are typically, you know, close to 300 pounds. Um, so you're looking like guys like uh, Henry Anderson is a perfect example of a defensive end in a three for defense, okay? They're bigger guys because they can set the edge, they can hold and play those two gaps or one and a half gaps depending um, depending on the scheme. Uh, also, your nose tackle. So your nose tackle is typically the biggest guy on uh, on, your, on the defensive line. So think in, in terms of our personnel, think of a guy like Marquand McCall. He's like 340, 50 pounds. Like those are the type of guys uh, you need. Now, Derek Brown can play nose tackle. He's big enough, 320 some pounds. He's big enough to play nose tackle, but I just don't know uh, if that's going to take away his ability, his ability to get to the passer by moving him inside. So I think he's more effective playing defensive end. That's just my personal opinion. Uh, you also have four uh, linebackers. So these guys, uh, you typically have a wheel linebacker. The wheel linebacker is going to line up on the weak side away from the tight end. And some defense call that guy the buck uh, for the backside. Uh, you have the Mike linebacker, which lines up between the Will and the Sam. You have the Sam linebacker, uh, who lines up on the strong side, who often contends with the tight end. Okay, so I think a guy like Luvu uh, could play that Sam role. And then you have your Jack linebacker. The Jack, again, you're thinking a guy like, obviously, Brian Burns. The guy that's going to get to the pass rusher and sometimes, or excuse me, get to the passer and then sometimes even drop back in coverage. So this is the type of guy you think about when you think about uh, that Jack linebacker. Brian Burns fits that to the T. And matter of fact, I think, and we'll talk about this later, but I think Brian Burns is the reason why you move this to a 3-4. He's gonna be so much better in this 3-4 defense than he is uh, in a 4-3. That's my personal opinion. Again, you also have the defensive backs, but we won't talk about that. You have two safeties, uh, especially in Vic Fangio's defense. He likes to use two high safeties, but we'll talk about that uh, once we get to the secondaries. All right, let's, let's move on. So we got to quickly talk about Vic Fangio's philosophy because you got to understand where Ivaro e Ezra came from. He came from the Vic Fangio tree. And so when he, when, uh, when Fangio left, right, Evero took over that defense and he basically used the same scheme and he didn't change much of it so that's the philosophy we're going to use although evero and we'll talk about evero's twist on it but that's where it's it ba the basis of the defense come from now Fangio, he wants to limit explosive plays he doesn't want to blitz much he uses post snap movement to confuse offenses so when you think about that they'll line up and show one coverage but then quickly when the ball snap they'll they'll uh, switch into another cover so they they're really good at disguising what they're going to do and that's why these young quarterbacks really struggle against this this defense and that's why uh, Vic Fangio has been so successful uh, is because he knows how to make quarterbacks think and when they think they're in trouble okay 
Uh, and so also he uses a gap and a half for defensive line responsibility. So typically um, in a three, four defense, you see a two gap or a one gap uh, responsibility uh, in this. And he does a gap and a half. And I'll talk about what that looks like on this next slide here. So when you look at the gap and a half, typically you want uh, like, for instance, we'll take a look at, at this guy right here. So you'll see this this uh, this defensive end right here, he's playing the B gap, right? So this is the gap he's playing, but he also wants to squeeze. He wants to squeeze this guard uh, in to play the um, uh, the A gap as well. So he's responsible for two gaps. And again, this nose tackle, he's gonna read both. He's gonna, uh, depending on the flow of the play, he's gonna shift to the left or the right. And same with this, uh, this defense. He's gonna play the B gap and squeeze the A gap. And then also this linebacker, these linebackers are also playing the edge as well, just depending on whether it's a run play or not. So just to, just on this run play, because when you think about 3-4 defenses, the weakness of the 3-4 three, the three, defense is the run, is playing the run, right? And so this is why this is important, understanding these gap uh, these gap responsibilities. So as you can see, as this play moves on, the flow, the flow of the play is to the right. And so you can see that the nose tackle is playing the right, right? He's getting double teamed. And this, this guard is trying to get up to the second level. He's gonna get his hat on this, uh, on this guy right here. And you can see this this guy's fighting for his life down here, trying to um, you know try to uh, seal this edge. And same with this uh, same with this guy. Um, so here we go. We'll, we'll continue this play along as he's about to hand the ball off, and we're continuing to try to squeeze this gap. Right? He's he sees that the flow is that way. So he's going to squeeze the a gap. Right? And so again, he's still reading the flow. Um, and then this um, this. Uh, this end right here is trying to squeeze that gap as well. So as you can see, we didn't do a, a, a good job of squeezing this gap right here, which is why this uh, this running back is able to bounce out. And that's why uh, essentially the lines win that rep. So again, the gaps, the gap responsibility, that's a very important thing. You have to be able to understand what's going on in this defense in order for it to be successful. You have to you have to be really gap aware okay so that's the biggest thing about these defenses the three four defenses understand your gaps you have to have smart players that understand what the hell is going on at all times all right so moving on now let's talk about Ejiro Evero's twist on the Vic Fangio philosophy because it differs a little bit there's some nuances in it again he's learned from a lot of guys from from Vic Fangio himself, Raheem Morris, Monty Kiffin, and Wade Phillips. So there's a lot of things that he's gonna do to tweak the system to make it his own. Now, again, he has a player-oriented scheme, meaning that he wants to play to his player strengths. It's not just about putting a scheme on folks and say, all right, you gotta play my scheme. It's about playing to the strengths. That's the key to a really good defense coordinator. Can you twist and finagle the scheme to make it work, right? But the thing that differs the most from Ivoro Ezero to uh, to Monty Kiffin, or excuse me, to uh, Vic Fangio, is that he wants to pressure the quarterback and he will blitz. We talked about earlier. Vic Fangio doesn't want to blitz much. He wants to his front his front four guys or five or six how many guys to get to the quarterback on their own and then uh, allow your guys to cover in the back end. Bro, Ivoro wants to pressure the quarterback by he will blitz and get to the quarterback by any means necessary. That's the difference between. Evero and Fangio, big difference, right? So now let's let's get into the 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 personnel, right? It's time to talk personnel. Let's talk about what Evero had in Denver and compare it to the personnel that we have here in Carolina, because that's where the rubber hits the road. Okay, so when you look at the starters that they had in um, the starting defensive ends that they had in the Broncos, Purcell, Deshaun Williams, these guys again. Look at Purcell, three twenty eight. Deshaun Williams, 291. These are bigger guys. Compared to what we have projected, again, Matt Ioannidis is a free agent. We have to re-sign him. Henry Anderson, we have to re-sign him as well. We don't have another defensive end to pair along with Derrick Brown in this scheme. Again, I have Derrick Brown pegged as a defensive end in this scheme. I think that's where he fits best. Yito Gross Matos, I think he could, in fact, get lost in the sauce. He's six foot five, 265 pounds, which is typically the build for a defensive end in a 4-3 scheme. He doesn't have, I don't think he has the, the body to play in a def, uh, play defensive end in a 3-4. You have to be bigger, you have to be stronger. You, and he's good against the run, don't get me wrong. I think that's a strength, but he's gonna, he's gonna have to bulk up a little bit. Look at the, even look at the guys in the rotation. Uh, Hennington, Hennington, Henningson, excuse me, 291. Jonathan Harris, 295. Elijah Garcia, 305. 320 for uh, 
Uwazakari. Like, look, these guys are massive individuals. Yutro Gosmatos does not fit the bill. So this is where I have the most concern about switching to a 3-4. We don't have the dogs. Unless you sign a Matt Ioannidis. Ioannidis does have experience in a 3-4 defense. He has the uh, experience playing defensive end in a 3-4 defense as well. He can play. In fact, he can play all the way across. He can play nose tackle as well. He's done it. So this is where I have the biggest concern. Let's talk about the nose tackles. So again, not too many nose tackles are held on this roster. In fact, they only have one because they have guys that can play all across the board. Um, DJ Jones, six foot 305. Again, you don't have to be a massive individual. You just have to be strong as hell. So if you don't, if you don't, if you don't weigh 340, you gotta be strong. DJ Jones is a strong individual. Marquan McCall, I think I got this with his weight wrong. I think he's 340 some pounds. So this guy's a massive individual and he's strong. I think he also best fit in a 3-4 defense playing nose tackle. Bravion Roy, I think, can be a rotational piece as well playing in the 3-4, but, you know, I think we have the guys for the nose tackle position. Do we bring in another veteran? Probably. I would probably bring in another guy just to be sure uh, because Marquand McCall is, is inexperienced, but I, I feel okay about this. Outside linebackers. Okay, look at the outside linebacker. Jonathan Cooper, 6'5", 255 pounds. Uh, Baron Browning, 6'3", 240 pounds. And then you look at the guys on the on the rotation, 6'5", 255 pounds. And then 6'3", um, 240 pounds for Nick Benito. All right, look at look at what we have. This is what we have here. And I think this is where we, this is the strength. And this is why you make the change because you have Brian Burns, 6'5", 250 pounds. Fits perfect in this. He's gonna be, because he's so fast, because he has the, the, the moves, the athleticism, he's going to be an absolute nightmare in this 3-4 defense. Frankie Louvu, also because of his coverage ability, because he's so good in coverage, I think he's going to be great in this as well. Six foot three, 235 pounds. We almost mirror exactly what they have from a size and build and even skill standpoint in my opinion. Then you get into the rotation. Look at Barno, six foot six, 245 pounds. Fits it perfect. He he is not a he is not built to play four uh, uh, defensive end in a four three. That wasn't him. Square peg round hole from Amari Barno. But now that he gets to stand up, use his speed that 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 record setting speed that he had at the combine, he's gonna be a problem. Marquise Haynes, he might get lost in the sauce here a little bit. Six foot two, two hundred thirty five pounds. I believe Marquise Haynes has the ability, um, but he could get lost in the sauce here. Uh, as far as rotation, we may go out and get another guy uh, just to be safe. I, I, again, I like Marquise, but I think that guy, that could be a name that gets lost in the sauce there. Inside linebackers. This is where I'm a little concerned as well. I am a little concerned here. Okay. Uh, Jose Jewell, six foot two, uh, 230, 236. Alex Singleton, six foot two, 240 pounds. Uh, and Justin, I don't know how to say his last name, six foot three, 300, 235 pounds. Now these guys in a, in a, uh three four defense the interior linebackers have to be big and strong because you have to be able to fill those gaps in the run game you got to be physical you got to be athletic and you have to be strong to play linebacker in a three inside linebacker in a three four shaq thompson i think he can do it he's got to get a little bit bigger but he's six foot 230 pounds i think shaq thompson has almost filled out his entire frame converted from a safety i don't know that he can put on more pounds and this might be a little controversial here but i love brandon smith sliding inside pause hey yo super pause on that six foot three 230, uh, 240 pounds, I think he has the athleticism because guess what? Also to play inside linebacker in a 3-4 defense, you have to be able to play coverage. Brandon Smith can cover. He's, he's pretty solid at, at, play, at covering guys, but he also has the athleticism to blitz. He has the athleticism to uh, play uh, and strength to play those run, those run gaps as well. So I think that Brandon Smith could be a, um, a, a sneak. He could be a really good inside linebacker as well but worst case scenario if not you can he can also serve as a rotational outside linebacker as well you get him in that Micah Parsons role I think he would be great there as well so even if we have an alternative here hypothetically let's say hypothetically speaking again you got Corey Littleton who is a free agent we need to get Corey Littleton extended I think he would be another great fit to play inside linebacker um in the uh, in this 3-4 defense Damian Wilson I don't think he fits per this is my personal opinion I think Damian Wilson is a middle linebacker in a 
4-3 defense. I don't think he fits. I think he's a cut candidate. Keep an eye on that. So inside linebacker is my biggest, second biggest concern alongside of defensive end. Now, I know what y'all are saying, but just slide Jeremy Chin. Slide Jeremy Chin down to, to, to play uh, linebackers. I don't think Jeremy Chin is big enough. Pause to play inside linebacker. He's got to put on some weight. He got to put on at least 10, 15 more pounds. I know, I know he can do it in a in a um, in in like in a rotational situation or in a a jack of all trades situation where he's playing linebacker and he's playing safety and he could probably slide down and play in a nickel every and in some different packages he can probably be great. But I don't know that he can be a full time inside linebacker. I don't I don't know about that one. That's just my personal opinion. And again, I'm not the X's and O's guy, so you can probably you can refer to another source that may think opposite of me. But I don't know that Jeremy Chin is going to be a full time inside linebacker. So that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I, this is what I think about it. I have concerns. Do I think? I think it the switching to the three four defense plays to the strengths of many of our guys. I think Derrick Brown it plays to his strengths. Uh, you know, um, Brian Burns, Frankie Louvu. There's a lot of guys where this this defense plays to their strengths. Okay, and we're not even talking about the secondary yet. But J.C. Horn, these guys being able to man up, which I hope that's what they do. Um, I think this is going to play to a lot of their strengths, but they, there is some gaps and you're going to see in free agency and in the draft, we're going to start to fill some of these gaps inside linebacker and defensive end being the biggest gaps on this roster. That being said, ladies and gentlemen, hit that like button, subscribe button, notification bell, get in the comments. Let me know what you think in the comments. Can we do it? Do you feel good about switching to a 3-4? Let me know. All right, I'm out. Peace.